Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss CFC replacement. So if you recall, we have the Montreal Protocol that essentially banned CFC productions globally. So the problem is there's people like me who live in Texas who would sweat to death and just absolutely die if we did not have air conditioning. So we needed to figure out a way to create some, some kind of CFC replacement that essentially did the same thing but does not destroy our planet. So hang on tight if you don't like these big long names because this video is going to be rough for you. So let's start off with the very first one they came up with. These were called hydro, chloro, fluoro, carbons. So let's break that apart. Carbon's easy. Fluoro, fluorine, chloro, chlorine, hydro, hydrogen. Okay, so these are j essentially just molecules that are made up of carbon, fluorine, chlorine, and hydrogen. So let's compare it to Freon 12. It always comes back to Freon 12. So we have the uh, carbon in the center, two fluorines, and two chlorines. This is just a regular CFC. This is our Freon 12. Now, the hydro chlorofluorocarbon, also known as HCFC, version of this is carbon in the center. We still have our two fluorines. We limit it down to one chlorine now, because remember, chlorine is essentially what destroys the ozone. And now we have a carbon-hydrogen bond instead of a carbon uh, chlorine bond. So this one is actually for, referred to as R22. So let's compare the two. First things first, our Freon 12 can live for 120 years in our environment. So 120 years, that's a long time. Whereas R22 only exists for about 12 years. So that's much better in terms of our stratospheric ozone depletion. Now, our Freon 12 is very, very stable. So it's not going to decompose anywhere. It literally is just going to flow all the way up to the stratosphere. However, for our HCFC or our R22, these are unstable and they actually decompose in our troposphere, which is great because that means they never even make it to our stratosphere, so they would have a harder time decomposing, creating that radical chlorine, which would then destroy the ozone. So here's the best part. If we assume that the CFCs were worth 100% of our ozone depletion, our R22 only destroys our ozone at 5% of that. So let's say the Freon 12 destroyed 100% of it, R22 only destroyed 5%. However, 5% is still a number. It's still is depleting our ozone and we don't have that much of it to begin with. So even though this was a great, wonderful replacement right away, we still are trying to phase it out. So we are actually banning HCFCs by the year 2030. So the global plan is to try to get rid of these and we're not using any HCFCs anymore. So what's next? What was the next solution? Well, we knew the chlorine was the bad part, so we had to try to get rid of that. So we came up with hydrofluorocarbons. Okay, so this is just a shorter version of the top one. Carbon is carbon, fluoro is fluorine, hydrogen, or hydro is hydrogen. So this one that I want to show you is actually, well, I actually have two of them that I like. They have a carbon-carbon center bond, single bond, and they're surrounded by fluorines, okay, except for, oops, let's make that a little better, except for this one on the end, which is one carbon-hydrogen bond. So this one is called HFC125. The next one that we use, and this one actually more common, and you'll start to recognize it, carbon in the center, fluorines on the outside, and then instead of a chlorine here, now we just have two hydrogens. So this one is called HFC32. So this is kind of the sister of the R22 that we just discussed above. So here's the thing. These two are beautiful for the ozone. They're great. They don't touch it. They don't interact with it. They leave it alone. So these are beautiful replacements. However, <laughs> and this was so sad, HCFCs and HFCs are terrible greenhouse gases. Okay, I don't expect you to know what a greenhouse gas is yet, except for this short little definition. So a greenhouse gas essentially absorbs IR radiation, so that infrared radiation, which warms our planet. Okay. So if you've heard in the news right now any talk about climate change or golden, uh, golden warming, uh, cl global warming, it is the same concept. So it's all due to greenhouse gases. And so even though these HCFCs and HFCs were much better for the ozone, they were really, really bad for our planet in terms of global warming. So what was the solution? Our current solution, now current, this is 2015, are these called, they're called hydro fluoro olefins. It's a double O, so that does look funny, but olefins, also known as HF 
O's. Now, let's break this apart. Hydro, we know is hydrogen. Fluoro, we know is fluorine. Olefin right there simply means a carbon-carbon double bond. It's a fancy way that organic people say it's a double bond. Um, sometimes you'll hear uh, double bond, sometimes you'll hear olefin, but it's all the same thing. So hydrofluoral olefins or HFOs, that just is saying that you have a compound made of a, a double double bond carbon, there's also fluorine in there, and there's also hydrogen. So let me draw out an example. So we have H2C, double bonded to our carbon. There's your, there's your olefin right there. This carbon has a fluorine on it. It's also attached to another carbon, which has three fluorines on it, okay? This specific HFO is called HFO1, 2, 3, 4YF. Do I expect you to know that? No, absolutely not. I don't even know that. But what I do expect you to know is that hydrofluoral olefins are hydrogen, fluorine, and carbon compounds, but there must be a double double, a double carbon bond in there. All right, why do we use HFOs? Three main reasons. Number one, they are great for air conditioner units. They're absolutely fabulous. They work well. They keep us cool. Wonderful. Next thing, they are great for our ozone layer. It doesn't, they don't interact with ozone. They don't deplete our ozone layer, so this is beautiful. Last thing, even better, they are not greenhouse gases. So right now, in 2015, HFOs are considered one of the best pieces for us to use for our air conditioner units. They're our best replacement for CFCs. However, I am sure in 10 years, we're gonna find out that there's something weird they're doing and maybe they attack polar bears and penguins. I mean, who knows what they do. But for now, they are a current solution. So let me ask you a question. So we've talked about CFCs. We talked about HCFCs. We talked about HFCs. Cs. We even talked about HFOs. So now, in terms of our planet, which one is the worst for our planet? Go. All right, worst for our planet, definitely CFCs. They are the ones that destroy our ozone layer. They are absolutely terrible for us. If you had to pick one that was worse, they're definitely your chlorofluorocarbons. Now, next question, which one is the best for our planet? All right, hopefully you said HFOs. HFOs are definitely the best for our planet. The hydrofluoral olefins are the best ones for us that we think right now. They're not greenhouse gases, they don't destroy our ozone layer, and they keep us cool in our air conditioning. Thank goodness, right, because Texas is hot. All right, have a great week, guys. Take care of yourself, drink water.